Hello and welcome to episode six of our GK Icon Academy's USA panel discussions. I'm with us today, our coach is Bill Bertner. Bill is a local goalkeeper director, or let me rephrase, a director of a local club whose responsibilities include being the DOC of goalkeeping. He's also on the PA West ODP goalkeeper staff. We have coach Matt Piscaglia, who is a goalkeeper coach and assistant coach for the University of Pittsburgh Greensburg men's team. He is last year also won the 2019 PA West Goalkeeper Coach of the Year Award. Congrats, sir. And we also have coach Zach Kruger. Zach is the head women's coach at Seton Hill University. Welcome, fellas. Thank you. Zach, I'm going to start with you. If, if just... Give me your thoughts on the, the, the generic thought process on a through ball and what you're looking for out of your goalkeepers in regards to through balls. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when it comes to the through ball, it, there's a couple of things that come to mind right away. One is definitely going to be how comfortable are you playing and dealing with space and behind your back four. I think positioning and being brave to, to come out into that space is definitely one thing that comes in right away is something that we always look for and try to teach our goalkeepers is to stay connected with their back four and positioning. Uh, it, it limits the opportunities for those through balls to take place. Uh, we've talked a lot about Manuel Neuer on these couple of episodes, and he's a great example of someone who's always out looking to take and gobble up those through balls that come through. Um, one of the other things that I always try to teach my goalkeepers is hands near post. If you're going to hit the ground, right? Try to try to keep your angle, keep your ball line as much as possible. Uh, and then if you do need to use your hands, try to keep your hands to the near post. Um, so some, some simple things. If you can come out and use your feet and, and keep possession of the ball, that's great. Um, but just be brave in those moments and, and don't hesitate. Because if you hesitate, then usually you're going to get beat. Well done. Well done. Coach Bill, I want to talk about the So let's get into the, the space between the back line and your goalkeeper. With, with dealing with an academy goalkeeper, and, and they're basically you know, trying to figure out what that proper distance is between themselves and the back line. Uh, what, do you, what do you advise a younger goalkeeper? Let's start with the, the 12 and under age group, and then we'll build from there. With, with that younger group, the biggest thing I'm trying to do with the goalkeeper is just to instill that confidence as to come out. A lot of times what I'll see with the younger group is if there's a through ball, their first movement is to back up. And we know that is the last thing we want to do. We want to start trying to close down and take away that space from them. Um, so for the younger groups, the biggest thing is just getting them the confidence to go ahead and let the balls be through. To go out there, start coming out toward the ball rather than retreating towards the ball. Okay, thank you. Coach Matt, when do, we, when do you start to talk to them about not only being comfortable with the space, but what age do you start to tell them to advance what Coach Bill was saying and then get into the foundations of you know, taking in – Taking in a 50-50 ball that's coming through, when do, when do the, when's the, the technical ability taught? I think the earlier the better uh, can, can help the goalkeeper. Um, if you're trying to teach a young goalkeeper uh, the proper technique on going out and winning a ball, especially whenever we get into those 50-50 situations with a, a through ball, almost turning into a one-on-one -on -one of sort, uh, if you can teach them the proper technique to go in strong and safe, that's just going to help their conf their confidence skyrocket um, and then just get them more and more success. Uh, but I think anytime we have a younger goalkeeper, we want to get them just aggressive uh, on a whole, whole game standpoint, not just on going out on uh, through balls, but even getting them outside the box when that ball is in the other half of the field in the final third. Um, so just keeping their, their movement, their positioning close and connected with their back four, I think is huge with getting, a, especially a younger goalkeeper, off on the right foot on being aggressive to win through balls. Well, let's talk about the, in, in my mind, there are basically three types of through balls a goalkeeper is going to deal with. One, they're going to win it. You know, the ball's through and, and they're sprinting out to get it and they're collecting it on a scoop. And there might be someone within five feet, 10 feet of them but they're going to comfortably win that ball based on you know, their quick reaction to the ball. Secondly, they're, they're going to the ball. They're going to win it. It's a lot closer, and they're actually going down to win that ball, but they're taking it in cleanly. There's no 50-50 opportunity. It's ours, but we are going down inside our 18 and taking that ball in on the floor. Um, third is 50-50. You know, we're both going to go in at the same time, 
Um, and then the last one would be they're going to win it. Like we're, we're dedicated, we're committed, but they're going to win that ball and they're going to get there before us. But there's maybe a two yards. You know, what's that technique, that quote unquote blocking technique that's very popular now. And then the other one is they, they're going to win it, but, you know, we committed a little too early or too late. There was a hesitant point to Coach Matt's um, to a point there. And now we are going to lose getting to that ball, but we have a set position that we can uh, attain and get into where there's like, say like three to five yards, like what's our set position look like. So let's start with, with those, if we could, um, coach Matt, let's stay with you. If we can, what the, the, the 50 fifties that we're going in and we're going to win and we're going down on the floor. So I think the, uh, the sprinting out and scooping up, that's something that that should be developed at a very, very fundamental young age. And I'm, we're not going to too, talk too much about that. It's just a commitment piece to what you were saying earlier. I think all goalkeepers need to commit early and go if they're going to make that decision. But in regards to going down for that ball, what are the technical pieces that you're training your goalkeepers to remember when coming out fast and hard for that type of a through ball? Well, first, I like, I like to phrase it that uh, I like to tell them that this is the scenario you want to find yourself having the most because that means that you're going to be in a proper position and your movement and your reading of the play is just putting you in positions to just flat out get to that ball first. Um, but when it comes to this first scenario, it's kind of labeled as the first one. Um, you know, we're getting to the ball first. So it's just a straight out sprint, straight line, not curving my run to that ball, just a straight line, getting there as fast as I can. And then it's, you know, a step and exploding through the ball. Because a lot of young goalkeepers will see too, they'll just kind of dive out to their side like they're making a, a, a collapse dive, like we're training in our warm up, or ju they're just saving a shot. Um, and then that's that small space, that small split second that they can give up still that the striker or whoever may be chasing the ball uh, can still beat them to it. So as long as we can explode through the ball, get our hands to the ball, um, you know, we should put ourselves in the, pro in the good position to win that ball and get there first. Um, and along with telling them that this is the one that they like, I always say that with your aggressiveness and your positioning, you can always turn that third situation where the striker has the ball into a second one where it turns into a 50-50. And then ultimately, like in a perfect world, is it going to happen every time? No, but if we're, if we're playing aggressive and getting to the ball quickly, you know, we can start turning a lot of those second ones, the 50-50s, into this first one where we're just winning the ball first. Well done. So, Zach, what would you add to that? Yeah, I like to use the technique in the third one of where, you know, we kind of get there at the same time. Uh, maybe we don't get down to the ground and we're still on our feet. Um, you can use that blocking technique, or I like to teach stalking, which stalking is just staying on your feet, keeping your hands low to the ground, and moving your feet with them laterally, um, and then trying to make a save somewhere in that window of that three to five range. So that's something we, we work a lot on, and um, I try to teach that as much as possible because you're going to eventually get into a situation where you will get there at the same time and they have possession of the ball, and you're still on your feet, and you're like, well, what do you do now? It's, you know, they're going to try to dribble around you. So just trying to force them wide, stand on your feet, try to make a, you know, get a save in there somewhere. So um, just being explosive and having quick feet. So, um, yeah, footwork's going to be really important in, in those type of situations. Being confident and having your shoulders in front of your knees is going to be very important because um, if we talk about, like, what Matt was just touching on, if you're going to come out and come through the ball – yeah, if you go out and then you rock back your shoulders behind your hips, you start to lean back, your feet are then leading, and then you're actually giving the, the striker more time to win the ball. So just have your shoulders, follow your hands, be aggressive. You know, I always tell them, put your face down there. Like, your hands are going to protect your face. But try to really be aggressive in there because then the floor is going to back out of it. Yeah, I, I like what you just said about being, being brave and being, going through it with our head first, our hands first, because that's our advantage. Once we start leaning back, now we're – we're almost taking, minimizing our, our use of what we have the ability to do and our advantage is our hands. We're a 50-50 player now with our feet. That's the field player. Go in with our hands, get that extra extension, go through it, be big, be brave. Coach Bill, what would you add to that? Uh, so yeah. Back to 50 50 where they're going to hit it at the same time as us. What techniques do you teach on that? Can you elaborate? Yes. The, with the younger kids and even going up through the older groups, you know, 12s, 13s, 14s, it's about bravery. It's about getting reps in, in training sessions where you're leading with your hands in front of your face to let them know, hey, listen, if your technique is good, 
you're going to reduce your risk of injury significantly. Um, I see a lot of the goalkeepers coming out and then pulling out like Zach and Matt have talked about and leading with the feet. Well, if you lead with the feet, even if you make contact with the ball, there's no control of where that ball is going to end up on a second opportunity. So leading with your hands gives you a much better chance of securing that, that ball on a scenario like that. Um, but with any of the three scenarios, uh, it's all about taking away space and going back to making sure we don't hesitate coming off the line in the scenario where we have an advantage or even in 50-50, the speed in which we come off the line is, is fast, explosive. In a scenario where the um, striker is going to have the advantage, the way we close down the space is a little bit different. We have to be more in control of our body. We just can't sprint out there and then get cut and then they're behind us. So just having, you know, I think we temporarily had a pause with Coach Bill. Um, I'm going to continue, though, with what Coach Bill was saying in regards to being explosive and getting out as quickly as you can. Bill, we lost you there for a second. Go right, go ahead, man. Rewind like 20 seconds. Go. Um, I was just saying with the, the last scenario is it's a game within a game. Um, the first couple minutes of each game, the goalkeeper should be assessing the opponent as far as what speed their strikers and forwards have up top to know that if that through ball is played through, am I going to be able to win that race to get to that ball first? That's a big component that changes from game to game. You know, you might be playing a team that doesn't have much speed up top, and as a goalkeeper, that should give you more confidence to, to come off your line quicker. Um, whereas if you're playing against a team that has a forward who's blazing fast up top, that's going to have to change the way you approach those through balls a little bit whether it's playing out a little bit higher or, you know, trying to delay the play a little bit more whenever they're played through. Yeah. And one thing I always tell my goalies too, is like if, if in the first two scenarios, we're going to win it or it's a 50, 50, you are dedicated, you are committed, you are going hands first. And the, there's a different hand technique for both of those, I believe. And I, it's just a protective mechanism. So the first is, you know, you're going through with your hands and you're catching the ball and you're collecting it. Heads behind your hands, just like a boxer protecting your face. I feel that's a very, um, that's something that needs to be communicated as to why or how you're protecting your head with concussions and the way kids are trying to be brave. You need to make sure they understand that this is a protective, this is protection. That's not, when they lean back and their hands are there, that's not. Now you're opening yourself up to get hit. Your head needs to be behind those hands when you're going down. That's why you need to be low. And also the hand position, if you're collecting it, your hands are open. If you're going for a 50-50, I tell my kids, like, these are your money makers. You know, you break a finger, you, you hear, hear, break a wrist or something, or something happens there, you're out for a few weeks. And the number two is in. You know, protect them. Cobra technique. And what that is is, you know, you have your hands, but you make fists, and now your, your wrists are going around the ball, and boom, you're going through, and you're going through with some force because they're going to be kicking. You're going through with your hands and your whole upper body strength. You got it. You're going to win that. And that you have a lot more weight behind that than, than that 50, 50 than they do. And the other advantage I'll tell you, go out screaming like a mad person, yell keeper as loud as you can and don't slow down. Cause what's going to happen is that forward's going to think twice. They, they will. I mean, they're good. You're, you have someone sprinting out at them, screaming at the top of their lungs, going down at their feet. They're either going to pull up or they're going to run around or do the, you know, a couple of slow down steps and then jump over you. You know, goalkeep uh, goalkeepers have that advantage. I like to see that used more on that vocal piece. Um, let's get into the block save. Zach, I'm going to go back to you. When do you start teaching the block save? And what, what window of space between when the forward has the ball at their foot, when they get there, and you, when is it a blocking position versus when is it you're in a set position? What's that distance that we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, you talk about really close distance. Um, I think the blocking save is going to be like two to three yards where you, you come out and you're like, oh, man, I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat them there. They're going to get there before me. Uh, but they have like a little bit of a window of a space where we can still be set but then try to make that blocking save. So it's going to be a tight range. Uh, I would say that if you're going to do uh, the stalking technique and moving with them laterally, you're pretty much right on top of them. 
um, but, you, but you're moving with them. But a blocking save, I would say, is, like, you know, two to three yards um, that you're like, oh, there's a small gap in front of you. Um, so you're not quite set, but you're kind of like trying to make this little blocking save. So um, at that point, when you're that close, honestly, it's all about reaction. And, and hopefully you've trained a little bit of reaction saving because um, sometimes you might be able to just make a save that's kind of up on your shoulder there a little bit. Um, and they can be really, really good saves. just depends if you have really good quick reflexes. Coach Matt, I see a lot of kids at, the, at, at like that 12 to 13 when they're starting to get comfortable coming out, but they still pull up a little bit, right? So they could win it. Like that's my advice is that you got to, if you can win that ball, you win that ball. If you can get down there with your hands and get that Cobra technique, give it a 50-50, you do it. However, sometimes you're going to mis misread that or hesitate and you're going to, to the point Coach Zach was saying, you're going to be a few yards off. What do you teach someone who's constantly, they can win it, but they, they pull up and they, they got safe block movement versus actually going through and being brave? What, what's your advice to goalkeepers in that scenario? What's your advice to coaches to, who talk to goalkeepers about that scenario? Yeah, this might, this might work as, you know, worrying it both to – a goalkeeper in this scenario and to the a goalkeeper coach or a coach in this scenario. But uh, when it comes to the block save, I like to say that it, it's great. It's good to use, but it, you can only cover so much space. We're just, we're trying to make our body as big as possible. Um, so we can only cover so much space. And so that's why that shot does need to be close. Like Zach said, two to three yards. Um, because if that shot gets, if that shot is any farther away, you know, that has more space that, you know, we talked to our goalkeepers about the angle play and especially with the one-on-ones, uh, how they, sh they make the goal smaller, they shrink the space. Um, so it just comes into play on such a, a marginal scale whenever a situation like this, uh, when they're trying to make that save. Um, but when we're talking to a goalkeeper that is just pulling out and just stopping the block maybe, or is really aggressive to go and then maybe might stop and give up on it. Um, two things I would go with. Uh, I always like to say that if you're going to commit to it, you always have to make sure you're coming out with the ball. Um, because uh, as a goalkeeper, one mistake we make and it can end up in the back of the goal. Um, so we have a big effect on the game. Um, so if we're going, we have to make sure we're coming out with the ball. And there's different ways you can word it for the younger kids. Um, to make sure, you know, make, make it more fun and whatnot. But in the end, if we're going for the ball, we're coming out with the ball. Um, and the second one being just the fact of a rebound. Chances are if we're blocking, it's called blocking. So we're just trying to make ourselves a wall and as big as possible. So chances are that ball's going to bounce off of us. Where that ends up, who knows? It's in, in a dangerous area in our, in our box, in our goal. So uh, the more that we can just get to the ball, and just make sure we have it secure first time, uh, the better off we'll be. Yeah, Coach Bill, I want uh, you talk to me about, like, you deal a lot with the academy levels as well. Like, when you see someone pulling up, the reason I bring this up is because I see a lot of kids who are taught to be brave and go through that ball when they can win it. But in, a, in, in training, it's easy because there's no – I mean, eventually you're going to bring in someone to act as the forward, right? But there's still all – the rule in my training session is this. If you're going for that ball and a keeper's yelled forward's – pull up and move around him. Like, let the goalkeeper go through that ball and win that ball, right? But in the game, it's not that easy. Forwards are going to continue to make their run. Sometimes younger goalkeepers will hesitate and get into a blocking position, and, and they're almost like setting themselves up for a huge collision because that forward's not stopping. And they, now the forward knows they can get to that ball and they're going to hit a shot, but their momentum carries them. And it's almost like in, they're setting themselves up to get hurt, right? If they're safer if they go down and go for that ball with their hands in that scenario. Um, so I'm, I really is, is a fine line between when to go down and when to hesitate and get into that block or when to get into that block, blocking save motion. Um, and I feel kids will hesitate on purpose to be safe and to stay into that blocking motion. And then it's an easy tap around them for a goal or dribble around them for a goal. Coach Bill, what do you say to a goalkeeper that you know they could have won, won that and they hesitated or they stopped and pulled up in a blocking position instead? Um, basically, I'm telling them, it, it's, you got to have, you got to be brave, you know, just reinforcing those aspects of it. And it all starts back with reps and technique and training, getting them down on their knees, getting them used to having their face and their hands behind the ball to reinforce the fact that, Hey, listen, if you do this properly, you're not going to get hurt. 
and to make sure whenever they're closing down that, that through balls that they're staying low too. Um, as Coach Zach and Matt already mentioned, and, and you know, coming up and then going back down is not the way we want to go. As we're getting closer to that ball, we're still lowering our level. And um, it, it just all goes back to the technique, making sure they're getting those reps in practice, starting from the, the very basics. I put them down on their knees, two scenarios, just coming down behind the ball and having that foot behind the ball, just getting rep after rep after rep to know how to do it safely. And hopefully we see that carry over in the game. But it's not instant. Very, very rarely will you get a young goalkeeper who has that confidence to come out right away and put their head behind a ball. Yeah. It has to yeah. be trained. And then going into that third scenario in regards to, you know, it's almost like it's a through ball, but we know they're going to win it and almost going to turn into a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Coach Zach mentioned earlier the stalking position. Um, you know, your, your hands are by your ankles. You're coming out. You know, you're looking for shooter cues at that moment. Coach Zach, can you talk about the shooter cues that a goalkeeper is looking for when it comes to that one-on-one -on -one situation? Yeah, it definitely depends on the situation and, your, and what your ball line is, too. You know, if they're dribbling straight on at you in the middle of the 18, you know, you're going to have to figure out a way to force them to a side to at least cut away half of the goal. That way it's predictable. So any situation that the, the forward has the advantage, you're going to try to do your best to make play predictable. Um, so that would be forcing to a near post or forcing – you know, them to move laterally instead of just dribbling straight at you and then having them be able to slot the ball. Um, so let's just say, you know, we're forcing them to our right. Well, we're going to try to keep our, our hands as low as possible down by our ankles, and we're going to try to continue to shift them to our right. So the more and more we go to our right, the slower they get, the more opportunities we get to make a save, and the more opportunities we get for our center back to cover us. Because if we can get them to slow down enough, even if they get the shot by us, you're giving your center back a chance to come back and clear the ball at the line. I think it's the biggest thing is finding an advantage. And finding that advantage maybe just slowing them down, maybe just moving them laterally, or maybe it helps us make a save. But it just gives you options as a goalkeeper to at least make a play. And if you don't have a chance to make a play, then you're, a, you're in a bad spot. <laughs> True. Coach Matt, yeah. talk about the stalking and, and coming out and when to be ready, what cue you're looking for versus when are you stealing ground? <clears throat> yeah, so once we I, – I always like to tell the goalkeepers, too, that we always want to start out fast. And obviously this depends on our situation, but if it is a, a true through ball that's played and the, the forward or striker is still running onto it, we can close that space down fast and then start to stalk and creep, as used in another term, get low, start to get low as they're getting under possession of that ball and getting into a position to shoot. But once they have the ball, you know, we're looking at their body um, and we're just trying to, once we have that angle cut down, if their eyes are going to go down, they're getting ready to shoot. We may look at where they're looking to shoot as well. Um, but other than that, uh, we're just trying to keep our eyes on to the ball. If we do get them forced to a side, we're looking, our cue is to then, um, if they're trying to get past us off the dribble, possibly that's when our cue is to go. Uh, I see that a lot of young goalkeepers try to just, reach for the ball straight forward um, and that's just not very helpful uh, pretty dangerous as well we're not very safe or protected in that instance um, so we want to wait for them to pick that side and then once they do we can go but when the eyes go down that's when they're getting ready to shoot so in that instance we have to try to get set uh, depending on our distance we're maybe just reacting to make the save or utilizing the block as well um, but again, if we can be aggressive and try to go win the ball, that's just going to put ourselves and the rest of our team uh, in terms of a rebound just into a better position. Coach Bill, shooter's getting ready to hit one five yards out. What's your set position look like? Um, it's hopefully at that point, your spacing is, is good. You've taken away the space and, um, Arms are to the side. We want to make ourselves as big as possible at that point because realistically, we're not catching the ball from that distance at that power. So we want to make ourselves as big as possible to make it some type of block or deflection at that point. You said your hands are by your side. Give me a specific location. Are we down by your ankles on our side, by your shoulder? Where are we? We want to make ourselves big. Um, hands out in front. I mean, a lot of times you'll even see at the higher levels, goalkeepers will come out 
and their, their arms are shifting side to side. Just, I don't know, a lot of times to create the distraction, but we just want to make ourselves bigger than, than we are. Right on. Coach Zach, what's your, what's your take on a foot save in this situation, going to like almost like a futsal type mm -hmm. kick save? Man, I, I always tell my goalkeepers this. What's your job? Your number one job is to keep the ball out of the back of the net. If you're doing that in any creative way that works for you, that's awesome. We can talk about technique and we can talk about, you know, the proper way to do all these things. But at the end of the day, if they're making the saves, that's the most important thing. So um, ultimately, if they make a foot save and, the, and, the, and you know, they find a way to, to keep the ball in the back of the net, that's in the moment, that's awesome. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Um, if, if we need to talk about technique later, like there's a mistake that led them to that foot save, then we can coach that. But I always want to make sure I'm encouraging saves, right? Your job is to make saves, make the save. Um, whatever means necessary. So um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the foot saves, but sometimes like if it's a hard near post right down by your ankle and it's a foot save off for a corner. And a lot of times that's a really good save, you know, and that's a hard save to make with your hands, especially if you're in your, in your, uh, you know, your traditional set position. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of any saves really just keep the ball back in that and I'm happy. Yeah, I, I love that line. You know, your, your first job is to save the ball. Like that's yeah. Sometimes that gets eliminated and people focus too much on technique and the right way yeah. or wrong way to do it. Make the save in that situation, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, what I, some of the things I cringe at, though, regarding a kick save is like the way De Gea supposed, like, uses it. Sometimes he'll use it where I think you could have quickly went down, yeah. smothered a dive, um, a smothered from a, like a low ball dive. Instead, he's kick saving out for a corner kick. Um, I think he relies on it too much. I think goalkeepers see that at the younger ages. They rely on kick saves too much. Um, at the same time, in that situation, it's gold. You know, just keep the ball out of the net. And if a kick save is needed, hey, a kick save is needed. But be ready for that second save. Like, don't just make a kick save and just lie on your back. Like, get your butt up. And one thing I always tell goalkeepers, like, if you make that save in that situation, your forward's by you. That, you don't need to worry about him. You need to worry about the next forward coming in for that rebound as well as – your next defender because that defender probably just got beat by the guy who just ran by you your next person's probably going to be a defender coming to you so even though you're on the ground you can still communicate and the word to communicate in that situation is probably either going to be time or away you know and it's just typically it's a frantic scream of away and you're lying down away and they're just clearing out that rebound we all get up we regroup we start with a corner throwing whatever that happens to be yep. but there are also times when the other team's not coming you can calmly, collectively tell your teammate, turn, ball's still in play. We have possession still. So can you keep that calmness about you in that scenario when you just made that save and communicate effectively after that? Yeah, that was good. I, I definitely think you should not be relying on foot saves. Yeah. If you're doing it too often, I think you're going to put yourself in a bad spot. Yeah, I think that and the blocking save, I think kids rely on it too much because they're leaning back. And, yeah. and if you know, I mean, you guys made the comment, I think Zach, it was you. Try and keep your shoulders in front of your knees when, when moving forward and being aggressive. You know, big, be big, be brave, and be loud. Like those are my three things to kids when it comes to this. Yeah, I mean, when you lean back, you lose all your explosiveness. You lose all that energy that, that you have. You know, you're just now stationary. Yeah, and, you, and you're, giving the, you're making the goal bigger for them, too. I mean, if I'm here, I mean, just look at me on the camera, and then all of a sudden I'm back, you have more area to shoot at. You know what I mean? So just this area is, is, is very important. You're opening up holes to what the forwards can shoot at. Yeah. Um, last thing I want to talk about, we have like five minutes, but I do want to talk about the space between the back line. And as you get older and more advanced, how that changes and, and what the goalkeeper's role is to minimizing that. Because I've always been told that's your space. You know, so if your back line's way up there and you're back in, on top of your 18, but they're at the half, that space is yours. So the, the, the less you can, the more you can make that space smaller the less area you're responsible for. So, um, Coach Bill, what's your take? And when do you tell goalkeepers to start being more advanced and getting out beyond their 18 to support that back line and looking for those through balls to then play with your feet when you're moving forward because you're outside the 18 to, to defend yourself, to defend from that? Yeah, you know, with if each individual goalkeeper, it, a lot of times it comes down to uh, comfort level. Um, you have some goalkeepers that they don't like to get beyond their arc because they kind of feel lost within the play. At the same time, um, reinforcing what you said, they should be responsible for that space in, you know, behind the back line. They're responsible for that. You want to stay connected to those back four. Um, as they get older, um, it seems to, they develop a little more confidence. You want to encourage them. 
You know, with, with some of my younger goalkeepers, what I'll do in training is I'll stand behind them. And based on where the ball is positionally on the field, you know, I'm, I'm chirping in their ear. Are you connected? Let's move up. Let's move up. But the ball's in the attacking third, and they're still back on their six. That's way too much space for them to have to close down and cover. So let's build their confidence starting at a young age, getting them up, staying connected. And, of course, the big thing is communication. Um, you do, we did the, uh, the topic of, of playbacks and so forth, staying connected. If you're out there, and even if there's a ball that's 50-50 you know, between one of your players in the back line and, and the opponent, I always tell my goalkeepers, recognize your visual cues. If you're one of the members of your back line has possession of the ball facing you with pressure on their back, you should be demanding that they play that ball back to you. And that goes back into the proper spacing. If the ball is out in the middle of the field, middle third, and you're way back and you're six, a lot, a lot more can go wrong. Whereas if you're out in a good proper space connected with your back line, you can instantly relieve that pressure and, and keep possession. Yeah, and I think that whole topic also goes into another episode regarding building out of the back and footwork and stuff like that. But it's good to combine them, I believe. And you know, when you're managing that back line or you're managing the space with your back line, not only are you managing – um, the through ball opportunities and defending that because you got to come out strong with your feet too sometimes and just one touch or, you know, play possession if you can. Uh, but typically that's a sprint out and a one touch, not clearance. But at the same time, you're also there as support for your back line. If they win and are facing you to coach Bill's point. And go and going to that point too. I try to tell my goalkeepers, if you're going to come out and, and a clearance with your foot, under pressure, make sure you're not kicking it right back into the pressure. Make sure you're angling that clearance out to the side. How many times have we seen young kids come off their line, do what they're supposed to, and then clear the ball into the oncoming striker and it's back behind them? So yeah, make sure you're angling those clearances. Agreed. And the other thing I always say too is just because you're outside your box doesn't mean you're not communicating. So you're still screaming like a crazy man, keep on coming through. Because again, that, that physic, that mental, like, whoa, this dude's screaming. <laughs> We're the only ones in the field who can use that as our advantage. Do it. Like, whenever you're going for a ball, if you're not saying keeper, you're, you're limiting the impact you have on, on that save. You're, you're making it harder for yourself. Agreed. Um, let's go into final comments if we can. Uh, Coach Matt, I'd like to start with you. Um, summarize through balls, space behind, the space between the back line and you and, and the three scenarios. And what, do you, what would you emphasize for closing remarks to, to a goalkeeper regarding that? I, I think when it comes down to it, it is uh, for a goalkeeper, just a lot of it is experience-based, uh, playing games. Um, we can train it all the time and touch base on the technical side of things. But when it comes in, when it comes into your reading of the play and your decision-making, that comes from your experience uh, just from playing in games. And sort of knowing like what, what the tendencies of, of your players in front of you might be. So maybe you're back for – uh, what their tendencies are uh, maybe if like we talked about earlier if you're playing a team that might have a guy up front that is a bit faster uh, you might know that your one center back is he's gonna be doomed like that, that's his worst nightmare um, so just knowing the tendencies getting that experience um, and just being aggressive um, once that decision making comes obviously it gets easier but that's the big part of the job is making those uh, important decisions that have big impacts in, on the game so at least the more with decision making, the more consistent you can be and just going with it. If we make a mistake, but we, I chose to go out and try to win the ball and I just didn't get there. In my book, that's better than going out, pulling up, stopping, maybe trying to back up or then change the situation all in itself. Um, Cause when I see that from a coaching standpoint, that is just goalkeeper had this, the decision made up and just tried to roll with it and it just didn't work out. So then that just at least at least allows for an easier point to uh, talk about and say, okay, this happened. Maybe we know our range now. We know where that uh, distance is to the ball that we can get to first and whatnot. Um, but I think as long as we can start making our decisions and maybe make mistakes but also have our success there, that's just going to uh, help us out in the long run. Yeah, and I like, those, I like what you said about, like, it's going to fail. Like, kids are going to make decisions and be wrong. And that development academy level, even up until, like, the age of 15, 16, when they're starting to be more brave, but they're going to make mistakes. Use that as a coaching mo moment. You know what I mean? Again, they read into your emotion. They read into what's happening. So, you know, use that. It's a great opportunity to coach. Well said there, Coach Matt. 
Coach Zach. Yeah, I would definitely say um, embrace contact because in these situations, you're, you're most likely going to be making contact with a forward or another defender or something because you're putting yourself in a situation where, you know, you have, you have to be brave and courageous to put your face down into those areas. So expect contact. It's going to happen. Um, I just want to touch on what you guys just talked about, about the coaching piece. If you're a coach and you, and you see this situation, do not show frustration. The goalkeeper is, is learning and it's difficult right now. So if you show frustration with, with anything in that situation, they're going to be less brave. They're going to be less um, you know, likely to, to take that chance. So just, just continue to educate. Awesome. Awesome. Coach Bill, we have less than a minute. Go. Yeah. Coach Zach, coach Matt stole all my thunder, but it goes to the reference of, of the coaching in the game. Um, one is giving these kids experience within the game where consequences of mistakes matter. That's how you learn. But as a coach, we have to realize to encourage and reinforce positive technique. So if your young keeper comes off the line as they should and they get beat as a coach, I'm saying, Hey man, well done. Great job. That's what you should be doing every time. To Zach's point, if you're showing frustration in that moment because they didn't win the ball yet, did what they're supposed to do, that can set them back. Well said. Be big, be brave, be loud, be on your ball line. Understand the three scenarios of a 50-50, of a and, and then just, again, be big and brave, guys. See you all in Episode 7. Coaches, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, yep. guys. Be good, everybody. See you in the next episode.